For more reaction and analysis to today's report into Victoria's hotel quarantine program, I'm joined by former Victorian Liberal Party President Michael Kroger and former Labor Senator Stephen Conroy. Good afternoon to you, gents. Good Hi there. Look, I'll start with you, Michael. What did you make of today's findings? Well, look, I agree with Tim Smith. I mean, seriously, almost 800 people have died um, and, and with respect to the former judge, she couldn't find who made this decision. I mean, it, it's not hard to find who made it. I mean, you know, the department... Secretary Femis to sign the contract. You just need to say who authorised you to sign that, who told you, and you go up the chain. There was a little bit, little bit of that evidence given and you just need to re-cross-examine people and you'll find the answer. But to come along and say oh, it was a creeping assumption or, as she said, um, those with influence contributed to an understanding being reached. I mean, what a lot of nonsense. What a profoundly disappointing report. And no-one's accountable for almost 800 deaths. That's farcical. And I suppose my other point is this, that this is a government which introduced industrial manslaughter laws that make an employer, you know, found guilty of workplace negligence, guilty of manslaughter and he can go to jail or she can go to jail for up to 25 years. Daniel Andrews just says, oh, I'm rerunning. It just shows a disconnect between the ordinary public and people running businesses and, and a government who the Premier just says, I'm sorry about that, 800 people died, I'm, I'm running for re-election. I mean, what kind of world are we living in when, when, when that's the state of play in Victoria, seriously? Stephen, given there is no line of accountability, uh, is there a cultural issue within the ranks? Look, the, uh, the inquiry said, uh, and Coates said in her findings, that uh, people will be shocked. And frankly, I am shocked. Uh, I'm shocked that the inquiry, uh, after spending five-odd million dollars, taxpayers' money, all the evidence, that it hasn't got an answer to the question that the Premier asked it to get to the bottom of. The Premier said, I don't know who made the decision. I want to know. And it's not acceptable I don't know. And he shut the inquiry up. The inquiry's come back and spent all that money uh, and can't answer that basic question. I mean, issues around uh, the role of the now former police commissioner have been pointed to. Uh, but it, I found it amazing that people weren't called back uh, to be cross-examined as more and more uh, of the evidence that was submitted came in. I mean, yes, there were mistakes uh, and the Premier has apologised and there have been tragic consequences of those mistakes. But for the inquiry to fail to do its most basic job, which was to get to the bottom of what and who were responsible for making those decisions, not influencing the decisions. This isn't, you know, a kindergarten uh, management committee. This is, this is the state government of Victoria. So I think, uh, like the Premier, I'll, I'm disappointed that uh, Coates has failed in the task that the Premier gave her. But is this a case of double standards that the Premier won't, you know, the Premier just stands there today and apologises and, and that's it and moves on? Well, look, he should apologise, and, and he's done the right thing by apologising. He's done it on a number of occasions over the last six months because it, it is a terrible, terrible circumstance that 800 uh, Victorians aren't with us to celebrate Christmas. Uh, and he knows that, uh, and he gave a clear indication. But what I, what I find extraordinary is an inquiry that was told, go and find out the truth, has failed to find out who was responsible. Michael, we've heard the Premier apologise a number of times uh, to the people of Victoria, given all those that won't have loved ones at the Christmas table with them this year, given the lockdowns, given everything that we've endured uh, in 2020. Does that apology mean anything? You know, he stands here this morning and says, look, I'm sorry your loved ones won't be at the Christmas table. By the way, I'm re-running again for election in 2022. Isn't that fantastic? Sorry your parents are dead, by the way. I apologise for that bit of a muck up there, but good news is I'll be running again for Premier. I mean, this bloke isn't serious. And, and as I said, it just shows you the disconnect between the political class who are saying to employers, if anyone negligently dies on a workplace or elsewhere under your care, you'll go to jail for up to 25 years or your company will be fined over $15 million. Yet he gets off completely scot-free. Now, to use a legal term, um, it, it's very clear that these deaths occurred 
um, because, of, because of the failure of the whole hotel quarantine program. There's what they call causation. They died because of that. That occurred, that failure occurred because of a failure of government processes. That's clear from the report. So Andrews and his government are directly responsible, indirectly responsible as well, for what has happened at those aged care facilities. Yet they walk away, you know, saying, oh, well, it's all terrible, I'm very sorry, Grandpa, or your parents won't be at the dinner table. I mean, is it enough? No, it's a disgrace, and, and, and Andrews should have resigned. He should have resigned months ago. Stephen, what do look, you think? Look, not at all. I mean, the, the, while the Premier has admitted mistakes were made by his government and he's apologised, apologize. he's, he's also, also you know, showing, showing that he is the smartest Premier in the room, no matter what uh, New South Wales like to carry on about uh, the New South Wales Premier. He's already implemented most of the recommendations. He's got ahead of it. Key personnel have resigned. Uh, the health minister resigned. The the head of her department resigned. The department's been restructured. He's appointed one minister so that they're in charge. His own right-hand man's resigned. But, like, he has already put in place the vast bulk of the recommendations that have been put forward, uh, showing again that he is just the, the number one premier in the country uh, at the moment. So he, he can look at that report. I mean, the one thing, and I would not... You know, I can absolutely understand why he is not yet signing up to this, I understand, is this idea of quarantine at home. Uh, if you look around the country, uh, there are a number of examples where people just can't be ultimately trusted. The vast bulk will be able to be trusted, but it only takes a couple to blow it for the whole country and the consequences. I mean, you've got all sorts of rumours in New South Wales about who has and hasn't self uh, isolated. You've got the Western Australian footballer in jail at the moment for two breaches of quarantine. You had the footballers up at the uh, Gold Coast outside the strip club. I mean, people, you know, can't always be trusted. And in, in a terrible circumstance like we're in, it only takes one person to not be trusted to do the right thing, and the whole community suffers. So I would be, like him, very cautious to want to rush to a self quarantine situation, even with ankle bracelets, it sounds attractive, uh, but uh, you'd really want to know that that was a robust system and that you could respond quickly. Michael, what do you think the people of Victoria want moving forward? We have not received answers today. What do they want moving forward? Well, they want to know they're safe and they want to know the government's going to take uh, responsibility. Thus far, the Andrews government still has majority approval and he has majority approval as Premier. That's because people always gravitate towards the government in times of crisis. They are willing the government to succeed. And every state, every Australian wants our governments to succeed in defeating the virus. That's why they're, you know, in, in opinion polls, supporting incumbent governments and import, in, incumbent Premiers. And it's why... Opposition leaders, whether they're Labor or Liberal, aren't doing any good in the polls because people don't want the opposition leader to succeed. They want the government to succeed. But I'll tell you what will happen down the track. As the Victorian economy starts to decline because of the over-severe lockdown here, because of the failure of hotel quarantining, as the Victorian economy declines, as people start thinking about the failures and the 800 people that died under Andrew's watch, I think his support will start to decline as people say it's just not acceptable for him not to take any responsibility. I mean, you, you look at the corporate sector, the CEOs that have resigned, the chairman have resigned, of Rio, of, of, of Crown, of, I think, uh, um, you know, various other companies um, uh, uh, over, you know, alleged misdeeds of their companies. Well, 800 people didn't die at any of those companies, yet those people still, part, you know, they still left their positions. I mean, there's just no accountability in Victoria, none whatsoever. Um, he's got rid of a minister and a, department, a couple of department heads, but Andrews is still there. What's the culpability of his police minister, um, you know, who was also there, the jobs minister? I mean, it's just a scandal in Victoria. And to get, a, and to get away with 800 deaths on this government's watch is, is, is a scandal like it, which I've never seen in, anywhere in Australian politics before. Stephen, I want to quickly move to New South Wales now. We see that uh, all the states and territories in the country have essentially shut... Uh, New South Wales, Greater Sydney and the Northern Beaches off from the rest of the country. I is that the right move, do you think, or have they been too quick to, to make that decision? No, look, I think there are too many uncertainties. I mean, what we have here, despite all of the dissembling by Brad Hazard, the Premier and the Chief Medical Officer, 
we have a breach in hotel quarantine. They keep talking. We can't find out who patient zero is. Patient zero is the woman that you've identified through the genomic tracing and sequencing that brought it into the country. That's patient zero. What they can't identify at the moment is how it spread from patient zero inside hotel quarantine to the Avalon cluster. And that is a real concern. If you're a public health official in the rest of the country, you're staring at that and going, we want you to succeed. We want you to find the person uh, that was the first contact with patient zero. Uh, so while they can't identify, the, the other states should absolutely take the precaution. I mean, we've already uh, got circumstances where people's holidays are destroyed, people's chance to catch up with their their relatives, their parents, their grandchildren are being shattered uh, by this. So the other states willing New South Wales to succeed need them to be able to close the loop on how the uh, virus escaped from hotel quarantine. And so uh, you cannot be critical, and the Prime Minister hasn't been critical, even though I'm sure he wants to be. Uh, and the, the New South Wales Premier even is accepting... We all want New South Wales to succeed here. The, the whole country wants to have a, a real Christmas. And it's it's shattering tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Australians from being able to enjoy, you know, the true meaning of Christmas, which is spending it with your family and your loved ones. Michael, is it fair, given uh, the international... F the, mm. the, the number of international flights that are coming in to New South Wales, New South Wales has really been carrying the majority of the load the entire year? Well, they have, and um, but that's you know that's the reason for the 14 days quarantine. There are, you know, there are weaknesses in the system. Um, you are you are uh, you know said to take five eight days perhaps to catch the virus. Uh, if you have a test a couple of days in, um, you can still be negative and catch the virus and, and still have the virus. It just hasn't you know permeated into a positive. Tests, so there are always going to be weaknesses in the system, and so that's why the 14-day quarantine period is probably the safest, and hotel quarantine the, the safest of all, with proper, you know, security, um, uh, obviously. But yeah, New South Wales has carried the burden because they've shed, you know, they've they've had most people coming back, and 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 for all those who complain about how Scott Morrison is not bringing enough people back. Home. Well, that list keeps getting longer because more and more Australians want to come home here. But at the same time, it's a matter for the states to increase the number of people they're prepared to take. So the federal government, are, you know, can't win in this situation because it all depends on how many of the states are prepared to bring in at a particular time.